Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we're going to be working on a background flat. Uh, the kit is from Monster Model Works and we're going to be adding a, a wood structure on top of it. So it's going to be an interesting build. So we have a lot to do. So let's get to it. So here is the kit that inspired this project and it is from Monster Model Works. And here are the dimensions. Um, it's a background kit. Um, I've already made some changes to it. There's some decorative molding at the top that I removed that was 3 eighths of an inch tall. So I cut that off. Now, because it was a background kit, these were the side walls that went back and they're like inch and a half i think so i cut the end well i cut it right here so i'm using that as my side wall on this side so the corner piece will be put on there and it goes like that So the two side walls are put together and will be this side. Now, how I came up with this length is I had these two walls right here, the top one and this one, in my scrap box. Uh, they were test walls from when I was building Wiley and Son paper mill with uh, Jeff Grove of... Carolina Craftsman kits. Um, these walls just didn't work for it. I wasn't happy with the look, so we recut walls for the kit. So these ended up in my scrap box. So I had these and I cut that to fit. Now when you're scratch building, you have to keep in mind that for clapboard siding, your corner trim is 16th of an inch thick. So 16th on both ends, so you're adding an eighth to the length of your wall. For your brick, the, the corner pieces are an eighth of an inch thick. So that adds a quarter of an inch to your length. So you just have to make sure that you do the math to make sure that everything is the correct length and matches up. I just braced the walls and the kit comes with pre-cut bracing. So as you can see, I just glued it on. Next, we will assemble the walls. Okay, our bottom structure is assembled. In the kit, they provide you with a solid back wall. I just cut it the same length as the front wall. The extra section that I cut off I put in the center for extra bracing and then also did an extra piece here. Okay, next we're going to mix up our cement block color. We're using chalk paint, cocoon, and gray sky. And let's add a drop of black. Maybe a couple drops. Okay, so this is one of the times where it's okay to use the flat side of the sponge because we're just trying to create a texture to it. Uh, we're not wanting to give it a painted look. This is just to give it a texture of concrete block. So I've masked off the cinder block and now we're gonna paint the red brick. 
And I'm just using four colors. We have an orange, a reddish orange, a dark red, and um, a red color. So it's French wine, antique maroon, burnt sienna, and tangerine. So I just smeared on some joint compound and then wiped it off. And I know that it looks really splotchy right now. But next we're going to sponge on some white to make it look like at one time this was completely painted white. Okay, for our white we're going to use light buttermilk. Now my sponge, I tore off little pieces so that um, it's sort of irregular, it's not just flat. Now I'm painting in the areas that don't have the grout put in there. It's not looking too bad. Now we have these little plates uh, that come in the kit. I don't know if you can see them all along the top row there. Okay, so I'm going to put a row of those along the top here. So I first painted those with raw umber. I then did a black wash over it. Then I let that dry. Now I'm just going to take some burnt sienna and we're just going to dry brush. Not much, just a little bit here and there. Mostly the center. Okay, now I'm using a rust wash. It is called light rust wash. So along the bottom I used slimy grime light and then while it was wet I sprinkled on some fine turf. It's burnt grass. So my doors and the trim around the windows and doors is all done. So I've got the wood structure built for the top. I still have to add corner trim and put in all the windows. The windows are all painted. I just have to add acetate to them and get them glued in. But I have to tell you, I am not liking this. Um, the white does not match the white on the bottom. And I think it's because of uh, the base coat maybe that's under the white. Um, I don't know if, if that's it. Uh, I just don't like the look of it. In hindsight, I wish I would have uh, done a green peeling paint to match the green paint on the, um, the doors down here. Um, I think that it would look better. 
Um, I think it's going to drive me nuts. So I think I'm just going to remove that top and build another structure uh, for the top that's green. I wanted to show you these signs. And uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I do these. Uh, because again, I'm building another wall uh, section or another structure like this that will have green uh, peeling paint on it instead of the white peeling paint and we'll do some signs just like this um, on the new structure so here are the signs that we're going to be using on the structure i did a google search on the internet for vintage signs i drug the individual signs onto my desktop and then changed them to 300 dpi i then resized them to the size i wanted to fit onto the structure um, i then put them all on one sheet and printed this out now what we're going to do is we're going to take sandpaper and sand the back of these um, now the signs in the center, I don't really need those to be sent, uh, sanded because they're going to be different and I'll show you that when we get to it. But the signs on the side, we need those to be very thin. So we're going to start with 150 grit sandpaper. And we're going to put a piece of cardboard under it because we want this to be very smooth. If it's not smooth, here you can see there was a line on my cutting board uh, that was cut, so it's raised. So when you sand it, you get that that line and you don't want that so you want it to be as smooth as possible so we'll start with 150 grit sandpaper and then we'll move to 220 grit sandpaper which is a finer uh, a finer grit Okay, I don't know if you can see, but you can start to see the image on the back of the paper. So it's getting very thin. And we're starting to sand actually through. I'm starting to get some little holes. So that tells me I need to go to the thinner paper which is the 220 grit. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But you can see the image, the lettering. Okay, now I'm going to lay down another piece of cardboard because we're going to get glue on it and I don't want to get glue on the other piece. With a sharp blade, um, you want um, a new blade. An old blade will uh, tear the paper if it's not too sharp. Now we're using 50-50. It's half water, half glue. So I'm just dipping it right in the glue. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now I'm just using my fingernail. And going in the crack of every single board. You can, if you want, take your knife and cut all the way through on some areas. Here is our other side. Okay, for these signs, I put a mark at every half inch. Now we're gonna cut these into strips. Okay, next I printed out the signs again and <laughs> added a uh, 16th all the way around because that's the size of the uh, wood trim that's going to frame them. So then just on the back of, um, this happens to be a granola bar box, just regular cardboard, I cut the shapes out. I then glued on this paper uh, wood pattern that I have. Uh, then I put my 16th inch trim frame all the way around it. So I did that for all three signs. Now I'm going to paint the uh, wood trim around the edge white. Um, I should have done it first before I cut the wood and glued it on there but oh well uh, I didn't so now I gotta do it now okay now we're gonna work on each individual sign so we want to tear the top of some of them to make it look like um, the paper the rolled paper that's glued on there has come off over the years so we'll tear it and then sand the back of it right at the top where we tore it off and then some of them will just leave or just tear a little bit off now again we'll use our 50 50 half water half glue i think i'm going to tear this one Okay, that one you can see I really, really tore it up. So I'm dipping my brush in the glue. Now make sure you don't lay the next one in the glue that you just put down. Now when this dries, we can take some sandpaper and hit those edges a little bit. And then we'll take some pigments and um, add some dirt to it also. So the signs are done. I'm taking the uh, 220 grit sandpaper. And you can see I just have a little piece. I'm gonna fold that. And I'm going to go over the seams just real quick. If they're raised a little bit, this will sand the edges. Now we'll take Farm Dark Earth. Okay, so very quickly, 
I'm going to add some rust to those frames. I want the frames to look like they are metal. Okay, that was uh, burnt sienna. Now we're gonna do bittersweet chocolate. I'll show you these up close um, after they're done. Okay, so this is where we're at so far on this. So I decided to tone down the white on this. I just felt it was a little too bright. So I've been using shaders from Ammo. And these are great because it doesn't cover up anything. It just tints the colors that are already there. And they're water-based. So you just shake it up. Put two drops. I just used um, light clay. And uh, just add some water to it. And I'm just going to go over the top part. Now, let's get back to this structure. For the base of this structure, we're gonna do another kit from Monster Model Works. And as you can see, it's a background flat, which will be perfect for this. Now, we'll have to modify it and let's have a look and see just how to cut this. So here is the front wall. And as you can see, we don't need all that length. So, so maybe what we'll do is cut it right there. So we'll cut some off of this side and some off of this side to make our side walls now i'm sure it comes with side walls but they're probably um pretty short yeah so we'll just cut some off of this end some off of this end make that our sides uh we're not going to have time in this video to do that but in the next video um we'll build this just as it's shown uh just the red brick i'll probably have to do um, some different lettering maybe on it and then we'll just simply put that underneath there and then we'll get our windows put in get the roof put on um, we'll have to put some trim around the top all right well that's all we have time for today um, I will have another video where we finish up this project uh, this has turned into uh, more than what I originally thought it would, but I'm thrilled with how it's turning out. I need to order some windows. Um, we definitely need to add some trim to the top of these. And then, like I'd mentioned, um, we'll build a brick structure that goes under this one. So real quick, I want to mention that uh, my good friend James Powell and myself have a podcast out called Crazy Double J's. Uh, we have two podcasts, and you can find them on Apple Podcast or Spotify. And they both cover many tips and techniques. 
Uh, we've gotten such a great response from it that we're probably going to do at least one a month, maybe more. We'll see. So hopefully you get a chance to listen to those. Well, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Uh, take a moment to subscribe to the channel. And if you like today's video, please give me a thumbs up. All right. Well, until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.